Now it's the time for demo. We'll be using our service request as an object. So what kind of an object it is? It's a custom object. Inside this custom object, I have few fields that I've already created. So these are all the custom fields that I've created. And this object is already been created in my production org. So why we are discussing about this object setup here? So we wanted to understand how these changes are copied into our sandbox. So for that reason, I'm making use of this object to help us understand how these changes are copied into our sand. Now let's see this object in our production org, and then we'll see how can we copy these changes by creating our sandbox. Now, first we'll go to our production org. So this is how our production org is like as of now. So if you see here, I have a tab created for this object already, and I have a couple of records that are already there in the system. So this is my production org, and I have this object as well as the tab plus few records in it. So I'll quickly walk you through the object setup also. I'll click on this gear icon and then click on edit object to see the object detail page of this object. So this is a custom object like we have discussed and the fields inside this object are actual amount, budget amount created by which is a standard field description. Again, a custom field last modified by is a standard field owner is a standard field. A name is the auto number that I have and a subject is a custom. So we have a couple of fields that we have created in this object and we also have a tab set up for it. So I'll quickly walk you through the tab that I've created for this one. So I'll search for tabs in the quick find and here is my service request tab that I've created for this one. And all the setup that we have here is in our production org. So now let's see how can we create our sandbox and also understand how are these changes are being copied into our sandbox. Remember, in case if you are creating a sandbox, we wanted to take a copy of things that are in production and we want to build on top of that. That is the idea behind walking you through this setup so that we can double check if the metadata has been copied successfully into our sandbox. Now, in order to create our sandbox, first we need to go to the setup, which I'm already in. So I'll quickly go ahead and navigate to the setup page, search for sandbox, and you will find the sandboxes in case if you are logged into production. So under environments, I have sandboxes. So I'll click on this link and this is how our sandbox page would look like. So just to reiterate the definition of sandboxes, sandboxes are a special organizations that are used for testing changes or a new application without risking the damage to your production data or configuration. Sandbox templates are used to create a new sandbox containing a specific data set. So this sandbox template are basically used for copying the data from our production. And the first part of the definition talks about what is the need of our sandbox, which we have already discussed. Now, if you see the production org that I have, I have developer sandbox and the number of sandboxes that I can create is 24. As of now, I have one. So this is one sandbox that I've created of type developer. The types of licenses of the sandbox that I have is a developer pro sandbox. I do not have any developer pro sandboxes. I have one partial copy and I've used none. And finally, we have full copy sandbox as a license and the number of uh, full copy sandboxes that are available for my org is zero as of now. These are the types of licenses and the number of uh, sandboxes that are available is a kind of split in between the licenses that we have. Now, how can we create our sandboxes? So if you are on the sandboxes tab, you would be seeing this new sandbox button. That is where you can go ahead and create your sandbox. So in case if you want to look at the existing sandbox and the list of sandboxes that are already created, this is the same tab where in which you can double check that information. If you look at this section, I have an existing sandbox called CI of developer type, which is already in place. So this is how we can check that information. Let's proceed with our process of creation of our sandbox. How can we do that? Simply click on this new sandbox button. That is where the page would be redirected and it would be asking a couple of things. So first thing that it would ask you, which is nothing but the name of the sandbox. So go ahead and write down the name in a such a way that it depicts the reason why you are creating this sandbox. So I'll be creating a developer sandbox. So I'll go ahead and write dev here. In case if you want additional details, like why we are creating this sandbox and what is the need of it, you can go ahead and write that in the description. So I'll go ahead and write uh, create it for dev. So in case if you have additional details, you can go ahead and write it down here. Now, the next option that we have is create from. Salesforce is asking us from where do you want me to create a sandbox? So it is giving us two options here. The reason being one is a production and the second one is the other sandbox that I have. 
right? So I can choose between the number of sandboxes that I have and I can basically create it from there. So as of now, I wanted to copy this information. I wanted a kind of a developer sandbox created from my production org. So I'll be selecting the production here. So once I scroll down here, I need to decide what kind of a sandbox that I need to create. So if you see, as of now, we have decided the name of our sandbox. We have given the description. We have told the system from where we want to create the sandbox from. You are telling the system that what is the source for creating your sandbox from where exactly it needs to copy the metadata and all the changes is what it is asking from. We have told the system that we wanted it from the production. Now comes the question where in which we need to decide what kind of a license that you want. But depending on what kind of a license that you want, you can go ahead and click on next here. As of now, I want to create a developer uh, sandbox here. So I'll go ahead and click on next here. So the next option it would ask you is enter the names of the Apex class to be run after the sandbox activation. Leave it blank if you do not want to run a post copy Apex classes. In case if you do not want any uh, Apex classes to run, you can simply click on create here. As of now, I do not want to run anything. So I'll click on create. So if you see here, our request has been uh, placed and the status of our sandbox is in pending, right? Currently it is in queue. I'll pause this video and I'll come back once this is done. It, a few seconds once I have submitted my uh, request from, from in queue to it has moved to processing. So again, pause this video and I'll come back once it is done. So now if you see the process of creating our sandbox is complete. Now we can get to see the org ID here and the time when it was completed. It took solid 20 uh, odd minutes for this activity to complete. So now once we are done, so once that is done, we can quickly log in into our dev sandbox by clicking on this login button. Let's see. So once your sandbox is ready, you'll get an email stating that the sandbox is ready for use. You can make use of this link that you have here so that you can click into this, click on this link and it will take you to your uh, sandbox or else you can go to the production and you can basically log in link, anything works. So let's do it from our email. So once you click on that link, if you look at the username, it is similar to what you use in our, it is similar to what you use in your production. Just this dot sandbox name is appended. So use your username as your username that is there in production dot your sandbox name. You can give your password that is there in your production. That is where you can log in into your sandbox. I'll quickly provide that and I'll click on login into the sandbox. So once you log in into your sandbox, the first thing that you can observe here is it talks about the sandbox that we are logged in. We are logged in into a dev sandbox. Currently, we are not on the production. We are in the dev sandbox. How can we check that? Just by looking at this section, you can we are logged in into a dev sandbox. Now let's see whether we have our changes in our sandbox or not. If you remember in our production or as of now, I'm switching to the production just to show you right now, I've switched to my Salesforce production or just to show you the object that we have in the tab and the records that we have within that object. So let's see if we have those things in our sandbox or not. Remember, we have created a developer sandbox. Let's check out if this metadata changes have been migrated. So I'll quickly go ahead and check if I have the service request object here. So if you see here, I have the service request object. So I've placed this object under the service uh, app. So I can see that here, a quick comparison between my production org and the sandbox. So I have this uh, tab handy, so I can click on it. Now, if you see here, I have my tab that is migrated, that is good. If I look at this data, I do not see any data here. That means I do not see any records here. If I look at my production data, I have six records here. The reason for that is the sandbox that we have created is a developer sandbox. How can I check that? How can we confirm that the sandbox that we have is a developer sandbox? If you see here, we do not have any data here in this object, but we have this object and a tab migrated. So let's quickly check that out. So if I go to the setup in the sandbox, setup in my sandbox, if I search for tabs, I can check out the object tab. So if you see here, same tab that we have seen in our uh, production org as well. So let's check out the object also. I'll search for the object, which is service request. And if you see service request object is also migrated and we can also check the fields that we have. So these are all the fields that we have in our sandbox. Same steps in our production. 
just to compare the things whether they are same or not so i'm going to the setup going to the object and service request and these are the fields that we have this is on the production or and this is on the sandbox so this way we can say that the changes that are there in production would be copied when we create a sandbox now is the data would be copied it depends on the type of the sandbox that we are using and also the template that we are using so since it's a developer sandbox we do not have the data that is been copied now this sandbox has the changes that are there in production we can go ahead and develop our changes within our sandbox and we can test it and whatever changes that we do is not something that would go to our production it is something that would be staying within this sandbox called dev that way we can go ahead and make use of our sandbox that is used for testing and development without risking and damaging your production data or your configuration so anything that you do here would remain within this sandbox so that way we are sure that whatever changes that you are doing or whatever testing or development that you are doing is not impacting our production or now let's understand what exactly is a sandbox template before we go ahead and create our partial copy sandbox we need to understand what exactly is a sandbox template sandbox template controls which data is copied into a sandbox if you remember we have talked about partial copy sandbox which means a partial set of a data from production is been copied into our sandbox so how can i define what is that partial set that i want from production into my sandbox that is where a sandbox template comes into picture so if you ask me why we need this sandbox template it controls the data that needs to be copied into our sandbox so this sandbox template allows you to pick a specific objects so how can i do that i can select the specific objects and the data to be copied into my full or partial copy sandbox to control the size of the content of each sandbox so i can decide what all object records that i want from my production into my sandbox depending on my requirement if it is a testing sandbox that i'm creating i can go ahead and say these are all the basic object records that i need into my sandbox and i can prepare a template for it in case if i want a a template for training reasons i can go ahead and decide what all objects that are needed for the training uh, partial copy setup training sandbox so i can go ahead and configure that way now the sandbox templates are only available for the full copy sandbox creation and the partial copies sandbox creation because in our developer developer sandbox and developer pro sandbox there is no kind of a data copy that would happen that means there would not be any records that would be copied from the production to the sandbox so that is why there is no implementation or there is no requirement of our sandbox templates there so this is the background of why we need a sandbox template now let's go ahead and see how can we create our template in our production org so if you look at this sandbox history tab they talks about when is this sandbox been created at when it has been refreshed when it is finished and when it is activated so this is how you can basically get to know well, what all activities that are happening on your sandbox so where can you create your sandbox template if you click on the second tab here that is where you can go ahead and create your sandbox template now let's look at how we can create our sandbox template so in order to create a sandbox template click on this new sandbox template button and this is the place where you can go ahead and write down your name so that you can understand when this template needs to be used you can go ahead and write down the specific need for this template and you can also make use of the description in case if your name is not sufficient so i'll go ahead and write qa sandbox template i'll be using this uh, template for my qa sandbox creation part so i'll go ahead and write it down said i'll write the description as created for the qa sandbox once the name of the sandbox template is done and the description is also done which is an optional field but it's a best practice to write down the description once you scroll down this is the place where you need to select the objects to be copied into your new sandbox so this is the place or a, this is the kind of a section where in which you can decide what all things to be copied so let's say if i wanted to copy the service request custom object that i have where in which i wanted to copy the information i can go ahead and select that so i this way i can go ahead and proceed with the selection of that objects if i select this object called account which has some dependency on these other objects those are also will be selected so make sure that whenever you are adding those objects it would also add those records which has dependency on it so that is how we can go ahead and select this as of now i've only selected this object which is a custom object which says service request so i'm happy with that selection and once done you can check out the number of objects that you have selected as a part of our uh, template selection once done you can click on save so if you see here we have a template ready 
So once your template is ready, we can go ahead and create a sandbox from this place, or you can go ahead and select it from the same place that we have started previously. I'll click on new sandbox. This time I'll be creating a partial copy because I wanted this partial copy for my QA needs. So I'll go ahead and select this partial copy sandbox. So I'll go ahead and write it as QA sandbox. So I'll be using this for created for QA. And this one also, I need it from production. So if you see earlier, there was no dev as a drop down value that we have got. So now we got the dev also. But in order to show you the difference between a partial copy and a developer sandbox, I would be selecting this uh, option as production so that I can copy the information from the production as well as the metadata that we have in product. So I'll be using this uh, partial copy here and I'll be clicking on next. If you remember earlier, we have clicked on this next button here. So this time I'm selecting a partial copy. I'll click on next here. And it is asking me which template do you want to use? As of now, I have only one template. I'll go ahead and select it here. So it is uh, showing me the preview of the objects that would be copied from our production. So do I want any uh, Apex classes as of now? I do not need them to run. So I'll click on create here. So if you see here, our QA sandbox is a partial copy sandbox that we have created. It is basically in the process of creation and it would take some time to create it. So I'll pause this video here and I'll come back. Hey guys, if you like this video, do like, share and subscribe to SFTC Quest.